This is M1 Pro. Holy wow. I'm Renee Ritchie. Thanks Maiden for sponsoring. Hit subscribe so you don't miss a review because right now I'm reacting live. M1 Pro, they are going with the M1 Pro branding. So not M1X like they used to do A12X. They're going M1 Pro. And it's a game changer. Now let's hand it over to Johnny for a deep dive into this remarkable new chip. And now we're going to Johnny Suruji. Johnny Suruji joined Apple to start pushing out the first generation of Apple Silicon, the A4. Uh, he's been leading Apple Silicon division. He's now senior vice president of hardware technologies, which is basically all the internal stuff, the silicon, the modems, everything that goes inside the devices. And he's been spearheading Apple Silicon this whole time. Now building a poor laptop has meant using a power hungry CPU and this kid GPU. But the two-chip architecture requires much more power and cooling. It also means the CPU and GPU have separate pools of memory, so they have to copy data back and forth over a slower interface. So he's talking now about how traditional computers work. I've described them as a charcuterie board, as a buffet where every part is laid out separately. You know, and you have to communicate in between them. You gotta waste time reaching for the different parts where an SOC is more like a sandwich. And we did this by scaling up M1's groundbreaking architecture to create a far more powerful chip with M1 Pro. And now, wow, this is way bigger uh, than M1. This is just a wide body. While doubling the width of the memory interface and using faster DRAM. 200 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, three times as much as M1, that's amazing. And its custom package supports up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory five nanometer process, probably five nanometer P at this point, maybe. Starting with a 10 core CPU with eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. No word yet if these are A14 generation or A15 generation. The A15 generation are slightly faster, uh, slightly better efficiency, and the efficiency cores are way faster. So we'll see. 16 GPU cores, eight more than M1. And we'll see if there's a, a, an even bigger, <laughs> an even bigger Pro Max version. M1 Pro has our industry leading media engine that accelerates video processing while using very little power. Apple's really all in on this post pro, post big cores. Adding porous acceleration enables M1 Pro to play multiple streams of 4K and 8K porous video while using just a fraction of the power. Oh yeah, and here's the ProRes. We saw this with the A15. Uh, ProRes acceleration was huge. It basically turned the iPhone into a mini afterburner box. And this is gonna be a mini, a maxi afterburner box. So you'll be able to do things on M1 Pro that you needed an afterburner card on the Mac Pro just two years ago to do. Finally, M1 Pro includes other advanced technologies for a complete Pro system. Like a powerful engine to drive multiple displays and additional Thunderbolt controllers to deliver even more IO bandwidth and so much more. So yeah, what else we have here? Secure Enclave, Thunderbolt 4, great. Oh, that was too slow. I'm gonna have to zoom enhance, zoom enhance. And there's that pruder, that diagram. Two new chips, here we go, M1 Pro. And Johnny gets to announce it. That is so good, I've been waiting for this. M1 Max, there we go. This incredible chip builds on M1 Pro and takes its amazing capabilities to new heights. And I like that they stuck with M1 because it does define the generation. These aren't next generation chips. Like we'll presumably, presumably get an M2 with the next MacBook Air, but this is the same generation, just more. It's extended. It's what would be an X chip. M1 Max starts with a much higher bandwidth on chip fabric and doubles the memory interface once again. 400 gigabits per second, twice M1 Pro, six times M1. To 64 gigabytes of unified memory. And its die has a staggering 57 billion transistors. That's 1.7 times M1 Pro and 3.5 times M1. So basically M1 Pro makes, it's like two M1s. This is like four M1s in terms of surface area. Not quite, maybe three. M1 Max has the same powerful 10 core CPU complex of M1 Pro and doubles the GPU to a massive 32 cores. So it really is just part of Apple's scalable architecture strategy. And it has an even more capable media engine with up to two times faster video encoding and two pores accelerators. Two ProRes encode decode engines. Ah, give it to me now. I want it now. And here's the performance per watt, the efficiency. And when you add an M1 Pro and M1 Max, they deliver dramatically more performance. Oh, Apple just redefined the curve. And now some people are gonna get upset that these are Bezos graphs without anything, but four core laptop, uh, it's too small for me to read, but it's gonna be whatever, Tiger Lake or I forget what we're on now. 
for, I stopped paying as much attention to Intel. Their peak, they deliver 1.7 times the performance of the PC chip in the same power envelope. So we had around 15 watts for the M1. This is around 30 watts. And at the peak performance of the PC chip, they deliver the same performance at 70% less power. Yeah, this is where I watched x86 die Parappa. So when we add an M1 Pro, it's in a whole different class. At its peak, it's more than seven times faster. There we go, an M1 Max. I want the graph for M1X. Hit me. Hit me with that graph for M1 Max. M1 Pro delivers more performance while using 70% less power. So usually, yeah, you'll have an NVIDIA or an AMD discrete. Even Apple's previous generation MacBook Pros had discrete, but they, they use a ton of power. It delivers comparable performance while using 40% less power. And that gives you a trade-off. Either you've got to feed it a ton of power or throttle it down. And some of them, when you pull out the plug, they throttle all the way down. Uh, so it's, it's never been a really good balance. M1 Max delivers similar performance while using 100 watts less power. Like we're gonna have to wait and see. We're gonna have to review them. We're gonna have to test them out. We're gonna have to try them with a diverse array, array of pro workloads to see how, not just how well these GPUs actually perform, but how compatible they are. You know, a lot of people still want their CUDA cores. A lot of people now are used to AMD GPUs. Apple wants everyone to write to metal. There's huge advantages to writing to metal. If you look at the Compact Pro laptop on battery, its graphics performance drops significantly. M1 Max is up to two and a half times faster. And if you look at the high-end laptop when it's on battery, the drop-off in graphics performance is even more extreme. M1 Max is over three times faster. The big battle between Apple and NVIDIA has been that, you know, NVIDIA wanted all the boxes to be commodity PCs, and they wanted to be the important part, where Apple wanted, uh, you know, all the graphics to be commodity parts and the important part to be the Mac, the, the metal, and they've been just bouncing, locking heads over this for a while now. And this is Apple's big play to sort of have their worldview Im imposed at least upon Mac users. We'll see how it goes. It's by far the most capable chip we've ever built. Craig Hedrigi, of course, is Apple's Senior Vice President of Software Engineering, the traditional superhero of Worldwide Developers Conference, WWDC, every year. And my personal favorite, instant wake from sleep. So this is interesting. Apple's silicon team, they typically look at current and upcoming workloads. They see the type of thing that users are doing, the type of apps that are coming on the market, the apps that are expected to come on market, and they try to predict the performance that you'll need, the performance and efficiency that you'll need for those workloads. So they've been building these things. To help optimize how macOS assigns multi-threaded tasks to the CPU cores. Advanced power management features intelligently allocate tasks between the performance and efficiency cores. It takes about three years to, to fully build out uh, one of these chipsets. So they've been looking at where they want it to be for these last few years. And macOS is designed to take advantage of the unified memory architecture in these new chips. So pro apps can manipulate huge images or video streams. And here we're talking about unified memory, which is interesting because traditionally you've had the RAM for the CPU and the VRAM uh, for the graphics chip. And you don't have that with unified memory. It's shared memory, uh, which does have some trade-offs, of course, but it means that with these M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, that 30, those 16 or 32 core GPU is gonna be fed by 16 or 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of RAM. We also have Rosetta 2. So Intel-based apps, even Pro apps with plugins, simply run without missing a beat. And they've got accelerators in there that basically reorder things so that they run as fast as possible. And if they've already been built for metal, they will sometimes run faster on Apple's architecture than on the Intel x86 architecture, which is just mind boggling. With Logic Pro, for the first time, musicians will be able to create massive spatial audio mixes on a notebook. In Final Cut Pro, video analysis for the new object tracking feature is up to five times faster. Because, you know, all that silicon is great, but you gotta have the bits to go with the atoms. ProRes Video Transcode is a remarkable 10 times faster. That's basically what I've been looking for is these boxes to become these little afterburner boxes or for whatever, whether you're doing video or audio or code or, or whatever your 3D, whatever your pro workload is, for these to become just massive accelerators, dedicated accelerators, not big cores anymore. The big core era, era is probably over it because no matter how, you know, how fast they get, they're gonna hit eventually up against the laws of physics, the size of the 
thermal envelope of a device that we, you know, they just can't get endlessly big, but also the power that's available to them. And you don't want to spike power and brown out devices. So moving off core, doing things like H.264, HEVC, ProRes, ENCODE, DECODE blocks, spatial audio, you know, audio unit processors, all of these things that aren't the GPU, the CPU, by pushing things onto the neural engine cores and onto AMX, which are matrix multiplication blocks on the CPU, that just means that you can accelerate all these tasks without having to invoke the bigger, hotter, you know, greedier, thirstier cores all the time. And Apple's are really efficient. Their big cores are really efficient comparatively, but you still don't even have to do them. That's also one of the reasons benchmarking has traditionally been, well, not traditionally, it's traditionally been pretty easy. I mean, people just download an app, press a button, and they call that a benchmark, but they've become really tricky over the last few years because unless you're an expert, unless you're like in a NAND tech level, 9,000 IQ, you often don't know if you're hitting an accelerator block. Like, are you testing two different iPads? Are you testing two different iPads? Or are you testing the same accelerator block in an A12X and an A12Z? Because those things didn't change. Uh, is it hitting the GPU? Is it hitting the CPU? Is it hitting the neural engine core? All of these things are, if you look at any of an Antex reviews, these are non-trivial things and they're not well understood. So measuring them has been hit and miss at best and understanding how unified memory works. Uh, for example, some people just think that eight gigabytes of unified memory is as good as six gigabytes of traditional, 16 gigabytes of traditional memory, and it's not. It's just highly optimized. Like because of, because of unified memory, because of memory compression, because of super fast swap, you get everything that you can out of that memory, out of that eight gigabytes of memory, but it doesn't really help you, save you from memory pressure when you're running two or three pro apps at the same time. There you actually need the RAM. So Apple giving us you know, 16, 32, 64 gigabyte options for that memory is gonna be really important, especially for pros who wanna have all the layers, all the objects, everything in memory. Uh, it's, it's gonna make a huge difference. M1 Pro and M1 Max represent a huge leap forward in silicon for pro systems. Gonna have to wait for the complete review to see how they really live up to expectations, but something I know is amazing right now is today's sponsor, Maiden. Yeah. I cook, I love it, it's alchemy. And Maiden has worked with renowned chefs and artisans to produce some of the world's best pots and pans. They've seriously elevated my game because they distribute heat evenly. They work great from stove to oven. They're perfectly balanced as all things should be. And they're just super beyond strong and durable. Maiden just delivers it all with premium kitchen tools available directly to you without the markup and with a lifetime guarantee. And right now, because you're watching this video, Maiden is offering 15% off your first order. That is the best discount available anywhere online for Maiden. Just go to maidencookware.com slash Renee and use promo code Renee for 15% off your first order. That's maidencookware.com slash Renee, promo code Renee. Clicking on that button just really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for more, just way more on everything Apple's announcing. So hit it up and I'll see you in the next video.